worked solid for a week oh, clearing the bungalow out. I felt ill. I don't think we talked to each other, but you know, it's just, it just, it destroys you because you kind of think this is everything that mum and dad have worked for. Yeah. Just looking at all the things. Everything was empty. You know, it was like, it was, I guess it was like they didn't have had a life. It was almost like it was obliterated, it was gone. You know, everything that they had, they owned, was gone. You know, um, you'd pick something up and you'd think, or oh, shall I keep it, or shall I not? And we, we, I mean, we went into the garden shed and the forks and all that was mm. there. And we thought, well, you know, that was Dad's. We've got to give it away. Mm. Old age is meant to be a time of retirement and relaxation, but the reality can be somewhat different. As people get older, many become fragile. Some need looking after. That might mean help getting dressed a couple of mornings a week or full-time care in a residential home. Either way, most people in this country think that their social care will be free. It's not. The seaside town of Margate in Kent has undoubtedly seen better times. Sadly, so have many of its residents. One in five here are pensioners, and that number is going up. In the next 20 years, the number of people over the age of 85 in the UK is set to top 10 million. That will bring with it a massive demand for social care. I've come to meet two sisters who've had a highly unsatisfactory but not unusual experience of the care system. Many people are forced to sell their houses and give up their life savings just to afford decent social care. That's why I'm here. Three years ago, Pauline and Barbara found out that their mum, Anne, had Alzheimer's. She deteriorated quickly. After ten, About 10 years. years after Dad died, I started to get these phone calls. Um, how much have I got to pay the, the gardener? Yeah, or the window cleaner. And, and I, I, I felt, I was, you know, sort of thinking, well, what's going on? But instead of me, sort of, because I didn't know anything about Alzheimer's or anything like you that. don't. And I thought, why is she doing that? So I went round there and sorted out the money, and I got quite cross with her, because she was yes. with me every five minutes of the day. And she just looked totally lost. After a short stay in hospital, Anne could no longer look after herself. She needed to go into a home. Um, but there was one thing that she hadn't banked on. OK, I didn't have any idea actually what was involved in the costs until that finance person came. And she turned around and she said, well, your mother will have to pay for herself. But 18 months down the line, I ended up paying all in all together £27,000 to Kent County Council. They had to spend another £56,000 on a care plan for Anne. It covers most of the cost of her care home. But they were forced to sell the bungalow that Anne and her husband had worked all of their lives to buy. And I mean, let's face it, they didn't have much money. They didn't earn much money no. in those days. And didn't. when they bought their okay, when they bought their first property, it was two thousand pounds. Two thousand pounds, yes. Um, but that was a lot of money when you was only earning what ten pound, Dad. If that, if, if that. that, I was only earning ten pound when I would have worked. So, you know, they they were probably over. Yeah. <laughs> so there wasn't there wasn't much money at all. But I guess they thought, well, if you buy your own property, when you get to your old age, you've actually got some equitable somewhere. Mm. But. And obviously, my mum and dad obviously wanted to leave an inheritance to I us two and Barbara's two children, because I don't have no children. But So, you know, that's what she's always wanted to do. So I'm only pleased that she's got what she's got in a way that she doesn't know where her money's going. Anne's care home is just a short drive from where they live. Uh, we've been here 16 years. Yeah, I mean, Anne is now 92. 
The sisters still visit her nearly every day. Well, I'm all right. I'm I don't know. I'm a bit confused, are you? Condemned, are you? Who's going to condemn you? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. How about smiling? Can I just have a glass of your paint? No, that's it. See, so you've still got your, your bracelet on. Yeah, I'd like another one, shouldn't Would you? No, would you? Before I go into work. Yeah, I've got to go to work later. But... Oh, thank you. Oh. They've taken your nail varnish off, haven't they? Yeah, they want it. Yeah, I'm going to cut those, they don't look very good. I'm taking myself home. We'll look after her. We'll look after her. <laughs> we'll look after her. <laughs> but paying for your own care does have its benefits. When you get to a certain point in your life and you need care, then you know, if you have to pay, you then get choices. And you have the choice of where you want to go, what you want to do, the quality of the home, the quality of the room. Whereas if you haven't got your money, you haven't got those choices. So Pauline's quite lucky in terms of the fact that she did pick where she wanted to go, and all right, she's paying for it. But we've all got to pay for things. But Jonathan admits the care system still has big problems. Lots of people talk about how confusing the system is, they don't know how to get the right information. Oh, do you, do you, do you, do you, you, I don't know you're anymore. You're a care manager. You're a care manager. Do you, do you understand? Do you know the system? I haven't got a clue. And that's bad, isn't it? Pauline has one last thing to show me. This was Anne's home. It sold for £140,000 two years yeah, ago. It's just a happy home, you know, we just come and go. £97,000 of that has already yeah, been spent on care. To actually walk away from it. it seems a cruel reward for a lifetime's work. <laughs> for mum's neighbours. <laughs> but cost 